So as we look at these uh, two engines sitting here in my uh, garage, I thought it might be a good idea to explain basically why this upgrade is, uh, is a good idea for your MR2 Spider and uh, everything it takes to get this done. Um, obviously, I think, you know, number one, this is the engine that just came out and transmission. So this is a 1ZZ engine and that's a C56 five speed transmission. They're, you know, it's about 125, 130 horsepower and with the five speed, you know, it moved the MR2 just fine. Good everyday car. Um, certainly they get raced with that engine um, in some things, but uh, a little underpowered, you know, certainly no performance monster. So the 2ZZ engine, which is sitting over here, and that um, basically is very similar engine. You know, 1.8 liter for this one, 1.8 liter for this one. This one adds lift, so you'll add a second cam. So when you get up over 6,000 RPMs, you really kick in the horsepower and you're up to 180, 190 ballpark for horsepower when you're way up in the high revs. Um, and then this is a six speed transmission and it's closer ratios. So uh, that really helps you take advantage of the higher RPM that you need to get to get to the horsepower. Um, now I got these, uh, the transmission and the engine, they are straight from Japan. So they are JDM. You'll see a lot of JDM out there. JDM is uh, Japanese domestic market. So these came out of a Celica in Japan and uh, were brought here to the States to an importer and uh, picked them up from there. Um, you can get really good prices on them. They uh, you know, always promise, want to promise you that they have low miles. Um, there is in Japan a, a law that they tax cars the older and the more miles they have on them. So it's basically to drive people to buy new cars. They get a big car market there. So uh, people, you know, trade in their cars eventually when they get up to somewhere in the 60,000 plus range and then they get chopped up and sent around the world to everybody who wants the parts. So that's where these JDM engines come from. So they're a little bit of an unknown. You don't know if the car was taken care of. You don't know exactly how many miles are on them but um, you're hoping there are far less miles than on a car that you'd find here in the States. So, uh, you know, if you shop the used engines, um, you're gonna find them with hundreds of thousand miles on them at this point, uh, because it's been uh, such a long time since they were made. So, um, so basically you're, you're increasing your horsepower from the 1ZZ to the 2ZZ by about 50%. And with the close ratio uh, transmission, you're also able to take advantage of that a little bit better. So that's the first big thing that you got to get um, to, uh, to do this swap. And uh, I'll be perfectly honest, I paid more for that engine and transmission than I did for the car. So it's not cheap, but then again, uh, it's not that expensive. Um, so, uh, you know, when you got to hunt around a little bit, you'll find some good deals and uh, you can get any of the 2ZZ variants will work. There's just some differences you got to do in some of the parts that you got to buy. So uh, that's the reason why you'd be swapping engines. Very similar engine, lots of similarities, but there are things that you got to do that are different. And I think the big thing to remember is it's coming out of a Celica. So it was mounted in the front of the car and we're going to put it in the back of the car. So you got some things like transmission set up to be in the front rather than the back. You've got some things on the transmission on the engine that are a little different that you have to move around. The dipstick's got to be moved. You got a little bit of a different motor mount, things like that. So a few little things. So we'll go through uh, a lot of the stuff that goes along with it. So you're gonna need a lot of stuff in order to do this uh, project. Some of it is just totally makes sense. You're gonna need, uh, because you're dealing with an engine you don't really know, you're gonna need to change all the fluids. You're gonna wanna change things. You need to change your spark plugs. You're gonna need to uh, change your belt. You're gonna need to, um, this is one thing you got to do is check these are the lift bolts inside your valve cover so you got to check these swap them over to these new ones um, this is a recall on it um, so then you need a new gasket um, so you, you have a lot of just normal things all the fluids uh, thermostat all those things you should probably check the good news is that you can swap over your alternator your uh, air conditioning pump 
uh, all those kinds of things. You swap those over from the one engine to the new engine and you pull those off of the, uh, the JDM that you get. Then you get into all the things that, um, you know, some things you really need, some things you may just want. Um, one is uh, these are new bearings for um, your shift cables, so for your shift linkage. These make your shift linkage that much more smooth. And uh, I'm going to be swapping out the shift linkage, uh, going to a short shifter as well. So do that. Um, these are three little uh, caps you're going to need to uh, cap off uh, coolant lines on the 2ZZ that you're not going to use on the 1ZZ. Um, this is a new motor mount um, that you're going to need. It's just a little bit moved over, and so you can pick up this motor mount to uh, move that. Um, you're going to need to uh, rework your transmission, which includes um, a reverse lockout and a new shift link or cable or shift rod that you got to put in to um, adjust the shift. And um, you can get all the stuff at Monkey Wrench Racing. They've got all the information on this. One of the other funny things you got to do, you got to change your um, uh, dipstick tube uh, because the dipstick on the 2ZZ, because it was in the front of an engine, is in the front. Well, when you move it, it's going to be underneath the car and you, in, in the back of the car, you can't reach it. So this brings it around to the front. Um, you are going to need a new air intake. So this is a new cold air intake that I'm going to be putting on. Um, these are kind of a fun thing. These are um, motor mounts are the same uh, between the two engines, um, but these are from Kirkosaurus and these are, ureth are urethane inserts that go into the rubber that you already have. So even if they're cracked or something, you can put these in. One of mine is cracked. The others are in pretty good shape, um, but you insert these, pinch these in and um, increases the stiffness of your uh, mounts, which is going to be hopefully a good thing. Um, and then let's see. Oh, then you get into the electrical stuff. You do. You can use the uh, wiring harness from your 1ZZ engine on the new 2ZZ engine. So you swap over that wiring harness. But in order to do that, um, you do need some additions. Now there are ways to wire it yourself, or there's you can buy this wiring harness that kind of does the uh, lineups for you. So just hook the new the old harness into it. I decided to just do that. I'm not that great with the electrical stuff. It makes me nervous. Um, and there's another uh, one in here for the O2 sensors, which are a little different setup. And it comes with detailed instructions. So uh, that's a good one. Um, the other thing you're going to need is a new computer, a new ECU. So you can't use the 1ZZ computer with a 2ZZ engine. So you need a 2ZZ um, computer. Um, I picked this one up on eBay. It's from a 2000 Celica GTS which is the right thing with a manual transmission. You can also go to a programmable system. It's a bunch more money. I may do that down the road or something, but for now I'm gonna go with this and swap out that motor, the, uh, the computer. And I think those are all the little bits and goodies that add up. Um, so you're gonna need a new air intake. The other thing you're gonna need is an all new exhaust. And that's something to consider as well. Um, the um, headers, are different between a 2ZZ and a 1ZZ. So you're going to have to get a new header at a minimum. Um, you can probably use everything after the header if you wanted to. If you got a two and a half inch, you could probably do that. Or a, I, I take that back. I'm not sure about the size on the old original one. Um, but to put on your 2ZZ, you're going to need, uh, like this is a, a new um, gasket for the header. And you're going to need all the bolts and everything to put that together and I'll show you the uh, muffler setup that I got. All right, so these are the muffler pieces you're going to need. You're going to need a header. Um, you're going to need a header. You're going to need a cat, although you can, if you're going to race it only, I guess you could go without a cat and then you're going to need a muffler. Um, this is all PPE, which is a little higher performance, larger, um, should really help with the uh, mid-range and uh, hopefully have a great sound. So uh, we'll see. But you know, this piece is pretty expensive in and of itself. Um, so uh, you may want to consider this as a place you could save some money, but you are going to lose a little performance. So you got to make some decisions about that. And obviously being an MR2 and in the back, it's pretty unique. So you don't have a lot of options. So as you look at this big empty cavernous back end, uh, it's good to remember that there are a lot of steps to make this work. But in, a, in the grand scheme of things, this is a pretty easy swap, I'm hoping. 
I haven't done it before, but uh, you're you know you're not changing motor mounts, you're not changing wiring harness. Uh, most everything switches over, so in general a pretty easy one. Um, but it does add up. Got to give it that. Uh, you know, starting out with a MR2 that I got at a great price, but almost 300,000 miles on it. Engine was pretty much shot. So uh, you know, I paid $2,000 for the MR2. So felt like I did pretty good on that. Um, the new engine and transmission, 2,300 bucks. So more than the car. Um, all the additional stuff that I showed you that you're gonna need to do this, that's almost another $3,000. Um, so we're already uh, tacked up there pretty good at $7,500 on this project. Obviously I'm doing the labor myself, so I'm saving a lot there. Um, and I haven't even gotten to the suspension yet. So still gotta do suspension and uh, new tires. So we're looking at probably another 1500 bucks I do know I need to do a little brake work and a few other odds and ends, but uh, we're going to be up there in price. Um, so don't go into this thinking it's super cheap, but uh, when we get all done, certainly going to have a performance car that it couldn't get for that kind of a price otherwise. And I think that's the real thing to take away that, you know, you pick up a, a Porsche Boxster at $10,000 you're getting a really old Boxster with a lot of miles and you're gonna to have to do a lot of expensive work on it just for that thing to run. This car, $10,000, you're gonna have a really great machine that is in great shape and everything's taken care of. So I think this is gonna be great when it all works out and now you have a good sense of everything that's gonna take. And next we'll start working on putting that, all those pieces together onto the new engine, swapping stuff off the old one, et cetera, to get this thing ready to go.